Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is where you are. Hope everyone's having a great day between your heads. Today, we just experienced another marathon match of Denis Shapovalov versus Pablo Carina Busta. Now, if you told me beforehand that the 2017 semifinalist was going to win the to win the match, I would say, yeah, sure. Would you expect it to be Pablo Carina Busta? Absolutely not. The fact that Pablo Carina Busta, that his hard court percent, win percentage is better than his clay court win percentage, as well as having three titles on hard court itself and one title on clay, really doesn't consider him the quintessential Spaniard, you should say, right? Because all these Spaniards are known for playing on clay. All of them are known for being that tough battler. And Pablo Carina Busta really proved that he was the ultimate battle-hardened player on court today. Now, don't take anything away from Denis Shapovalov. Winning the first set, coming back to win the fourth set, six love. I mean, it was an unbelievable scoreline. Four hours in total of a match. And a total, I believe, Dennis ran over two miles. It was over like 14,000 feet, the way they put it on the US Open app. And the same for the, uh, Pablo Carena. I think he was just over 14,000 as well. It was an unbelievable match. After a while, I think the mental side started to come out of Dennis Shapovalov, in my personal opinion. Just because you could hear him start getting frustrated and him screaming and having outbursts. And at one point, he almost hit a line judge as well. Oh my God, are we gonna have another incident? Hopefully not. Dear God, that was scary. Because that wouldn't have been the first time he's done that as well. We can't forget when Dennis cracked the ball against an umpire's face at the Davis Cup, and that's how I first knew Dennis Shapovalov. But that's besides the point. The real point is that Pablo Carina Busta is back in the semifinals of the US Open. He was a semifinalist back in 2017, and he's done unbelievably well to get here. A little bit of luck with Novak defaulting during their match, but ultimately proved himself against Dennis. And I think when he was playing Dennis, I think Dennis had in the back of his mind, and this is why we, I think, saw more outbursts, is that pressure of winning that first Grand Slam. That pressure of, okay, Novak's out, this is up for anyone. Because it can really change someone's perspective on how this happens, right? It really can. It really changes their perspective. Because in my mind, he knows that he has to get to the semifinal to solidify himself as the next contender, as the next player to win a Grand Slam. Especially from Canada, now that Bianca's won one, now it's up to him and Felix to see who can battle it out to become the first Canadian man to win a singles Grand Slam title. Another stat I wanted to throw at you guys was the amount of winners to unforced errors. Now, the only two or three, I should say, is Dennis had 76 winners. He also had 76 unforced errors. I mean, Public Reign of Boost only had 46 unforced errors, but I can only say only in that scenario because Dennis almost had 100. <laughs> he took a lot of risks. And he was paired up with Rohan Bopana, I believe, for doubles. And you really saw his doubles game come out during this match because he came to net over 70 times and converted, oh, I think, over half of those net points. Which is an astonishing stat because you don't see that from young talent these days. You don't see them become that comfortable at net so quickly. And I think over time, Dennis has developed that skill of coming to net and being aggressive. And a lot of his points that he was trying to come in on were high aggressive, high percentage balls put in the court. And that, and for him too, he started serving and volleying after a while. His serve did save him a lot, but it also dwindled over time because in the first set, Felix was serving over 70% of his second serves in. By the second set, it was less than 50. And he started double faulting more and it became a huge issue for him giving away, giving away free points. Look, Dennis played an unbelievable match. He also had over 14 hours on court time coming into that match. 
over 14 hours. That's unbelievable. And I think Pablo Crane Busta only had probably 78. That makes a huge difference, especially if you're playing a five setter too in four hours. That puts his total on court time to over 18 hours, which is unbelievable. And that's before the semifinals. But at the end of the day, Pablo Carina Busta came out on top, played an unbelievable match, really stayed focused. He had some unbelievable backhands. Very, in my opinion, probably an underrated backhand compared to everyone else that's in the field. But it's such a deadly weapon. It's such a deadly weapon. So congratulations to Pablo Carina Busta on his victory and getting back to the U.S. Open semifinals. And congratulations to Dennis on an unbelievable run. We hope to see him do well again like this at another major. Hopefully he'll be playing the Rolling Garros when we get to see that there. So I hope you guys have a great day. Hope everyone's staying safe. Hopefully you're washing your hands. Hopefully you're staying six feet apart. Hopefully you're staying aware and keeping vigilant of the coronavirus pandemic. Hope to see you guys soon. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Take care guys.